Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is Teacher. Hello. And today we're going to talk about Little Monsters, the 2019 one. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now! If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. Alright, so let's get into it. Alright, what would you think of this one? Once I got past the first 15 minutes, mm -hmm. the movie became enjoyable. Yes. <laughs> Again, full disclosure to the audience, I actually uh, DM'd you like 10 minutes and I'm like, I'm not liking this. Well, at first I thought I selected the wrong movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and was watching an uncomfortable and annoying family drama. Uh, sadly, I spoiled the plot for myself when I looked it up on IMDb on my phone after messaging you about how much I wasn't enjoying the film in the beginning. So I, I spoiled it for myself, but my fault for being impatient in my uncomfortableness. But once the plot shifted to the actual premise, it was an easy breezy last hour to sit through. What about you? Oh, yeah. I, I thought this movie was a lot of fun. Definitely going to go with what you said Uh the beginning part of the narrative focuses on Dave, who is just an absolute garbage person. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Watching him be a garbage person is exactly the funnest thing in the world. No. But once all the entire cast got together and the plot started moving along, yeah, it became a pretty fun little movie. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, there were some things I did like. Uh, other than Dave's character, I liked everyone else. And even then, I, I got to give kudos to Alexander England because he played the character of Dave to a T. From appearance to delivery, the guy was perfectly cast. So perfect, in fact, that he made me dislike him almost immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Josh Gad did a great job as a kid's show host. And again, played it perfectly. Like he had like the tone of voice and the mannerisms and just like when he changed his voice to the higher pitch octave, it was perfect. And I love that he went like Mr. Hyde in the latter half, pretty much taking up the douche mantle from Dave. And it was cool to see Lupita again, as she graced our channel in this month's horror marathon on day one in Us. It was great to see her in a more lighthearted role, kinda. <laughs> <laughs> Where at least her character was sunnier. Mm -hmm. And props to her for learning how to play ukulele in a matter of weeks. Yeah. That was all her. I love that when she takes on a role, she invests herself 110%. Mm -hmm. Hell, in Us, she even stayed in character between shots. So I, I love her. I think she's just fantastic. I also have to give writer-director Abe Forsyth uh, some credit for his spin on the zombie subgenre in horror. I loved how they molded the plot around these innocent and impressionable children trying to keep them safe and protected both physically and mentally. I mean, fuck everyone else's kids because we had kid zombies again this month. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, awesome approach to the zombie outbreak. Um, speaking of kids, for a cast that was comprised mostly of them, good job on the whole by the child actors. Yeah. I thought Diesel La Toraca, awesome name by the way, was adorable as Felix. And everyone else played their parts well enough that no one stuck out as, oh god, this kid can't act. Um, I loved the zombie koala mascot. <laughs> I love that the zombies were still kind of like in character as like as they were. So mm -hmm. he was still kind of like being the koala mascot, but a zombie. Um, that one stuck out to me. And I might be wrong, but I think we had a um, I think we had someone with Down syndrome as a zombie too. I think so too. And that's just fucking awesome representation. Mm -hmm. So if that's if that's if I saw that correctly, badass, fucking cool. Like you can tell Abe had fun making his zombies from mm -hmm. the ones mentioned to the puppeteer guy with his zombie puppet. Yes, I just, love the zombie puppet. Yeah, hand. that was just ridiculous, <laughs> but it, it worked. And special shout out to the death of Teddy McGiggles. Awesome name again, by the way. That was mm -hmm. horrifically graphic and even surprised me. And they showed it for like a second. I was like, whoa, fuck. <laughs> but those are the main things that I liked. What about you? Um, I loved Miss Caroline. Mm -hmm. She was just so adorable. Yeah. And I loved her more when she was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I loved it when she confronted it was Teddy. Yeah, yeah. And she threatened his ass. And I just love that line. You're a liability at this point. And I 100% believe that she would absolutely gut him if he put those kids in jail. Oh, in yeah. Danger. Oh, yeah. And so, badass moment to her. Uh -huh. um, I liked how in this universe they established that there is both slow zombies and fast zombies. Yes, when they asked, slow or fast. Yeah, That was fantastic. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, the situations played out well, and, and yeah, it was just absolutely adorable. Um, I'm glad that it very much hinted at we were possibly going to get a not happy ending yeah yeah and i'm glad they didn't do that because i'm just like that would be horrifying for this movie to switch 
moods entirely for that. Um, but it still kept it, even at the end, it still kept it upbeat and mm-hmm. lighthearted. Yeah, yeah. There's much that I liked about it, and it's just kind of pretty much the whole package. But, yeah, so that's what I liked. Well, there were some parts I thought could have been better, mainly the character of Dave. I wanted to stab him. I, honest to God, wanted to fucking stab him in his stupid fucking face. I can't recall someone in a movie pissing me off so much I wanted to stop watching said movie. I get that he was written to be a giant, man-child, irresponsible asshole, but once he almost killed his nephew, I was done with him. I don't even care that that was his wake-up call, 180-degree redemption, come-to-Jesus moment. It was too late. And I understand that was the entire point of his character. But at the same time, sometimes you can write someone uh, so fucking douchey, they're irredeemable. I didn't buy his redemption arc. It felt forced. And for him to be snapped out of his douchey ways into a fully functioning adult that somehow cured himself of his myriad of issues wasn't plausible to me. I guess what I'm trying to say is that his psychosis ran deeper than something that could be fixed by being so irresponsible that you almost kill a little boy because you're a stupid fucking cunt of a human being. Fuck Dave. (laughs) <laughs> everything about his character was bullshit again that's just me i know that's the point and as said sometimes it's done too effectively which might not make sense to our viewers and listeners and i own up to that but he bugged me that much uh everything about him being fixed felt inauthentic to the character uh like one of my favorite scenes was the one where josh gad and him were fighting and josh was slapping the shit out of him i was like yeah slap him break all the plates on his stupid head <laughs> i was into that scene uh, and that's about it, honestly. I enjoyed everything else. Yes, the military stuff felt a little bit parody-ish, but I think that was the whole point of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it didn't get to me. And this is a nitpick, but I think when Teddy McGiggle admitted to shitting his pants, he should have made some effort to change into something else. Yeah. And it was never brought up again. You'd think a classroom full of five-year-olds would comment on the smell. Mm-hmm. It's not going to go away just because the next scene takes place with him crying on the floor. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a little, kind of a little chink in the armor. And finally, I fast forwarded through the end credits because I'm not listening to fucking (laughs) Mbop. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What didn't you like? Um, I guess the only thing that bugged me a little bit was just the pacing at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, Focusing way too much on Dave and his problems. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, oh my god. And yeah, that that could have been trimmed a little bit. A lot bit. Yeah. Like all of it. But but aside from that, uh, that's about it. Yeah. He was not a fun character. Mm Mm-hmm. God damn, he was not a fun character. I fucking hate Dave. (laughs) I didn't hate him. I fucking hate Dave. But yes. Fuck Dave. Fuck Dave. Fuck Dave. Fuck Dave. Dave. (laughs) So all things considered, would you recommend it? Absolutely. You? Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is another one that I think is a uh, for the masses movie. Mm. Some of some movies we watch, we don't really would, wouldn't recommend to like everyone. This one you could. Oh, yeah. It's like I never thought I would say the words lighthearted zombie movie. <laughs> but that's what it is. It's pretty much it's, it's pretty much like mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a kid's movie zombie movie. Mm-hmm. And I thought that Abe Forsyth did a really good job. From the writing of the characters a little too well to the plot. You know, it bordered that line of parody and seriousness and lightheartedness and just fun. And it, it skirted all those lines very well. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, this was pretty much for everyone. So, yeah, check it out. It was pretty good. Anything else you would like to add? No, I think that about covers. Cool. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the VizCast. Please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. And there is a link in the description below for the Patreon that covers all of the creative endeavors, as well as access to bonus content. So please consider showing your support. And until next time, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we'll see you in the next video. Fuck Dave. Goodbye. (laughs) Bye.